What's up guys? I know it's been a while but I'm back and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you why I use Vim for my software development projects and why you might want to learn how to use it too. If you've ever found yourself typing away on your terminal and you end up in a screen like this one and don't know how to get out, then you've encountered Vim before. This is so common it's practically become a meme nowadays and it used to happen to me too. To get out of Vim you type colon Q which is short for quit. A lot of people consider learning Vim a really steep learning curve and honestly it can be pretty challenging and uncomfortable at first but if you stick with it long enough you'll learn to love it and never go back to your regular code editor again. At least that was my experience. So the first reason that I think Vim is so good is because of how well it's designed and how incredibly powerful it can be. One of the reasons Vim is so uncomfortable to learn at first is that it's completely keyboard based and you can't use your mouse at all. It's also one of its major benefits. Everything is based off of modes and keyboard commands. Vim has three primary modes. The first and most important one is called normal or command mode. In this mode, every key you press on your keyboard represents a different command or action you can take. For example, you might be wondering, how do I move inside Vim if I can't use my mouse? Well, the easiest way to do this is by using the H, J, K, and L keys located on the home row of your keyboard. H moves the cursor left, J moves it down, K moves it up, and L moves it to the right. You can also put a number before these keys to move that number of lines, which is also really nice. So for example, if I type 5J, then I'll move five lines down. And if I type 5K, then I'll move five lines up. There are a bunch of other keys that you can use to move inside Vim. For example, you can use W to move to the beginning of the next word, B to move to the beginning of the previous word, E to move to the end of the word, zero to move to the start of the line, dollar sign to move to the end of the line, GG to move to the beginning of the document, and G to move to the end of the document. But now you might be wondering, how do I actually type something inside Vim? Well, that's where Vim's second mode comes in, insert mode. You can use the I key to move from normal mode to insert mode. Now that you're in insert mode, anything you type now will actually go into the file like in any other regular code editor. And once you're done, you immediately should go back to normal mode by hitting the escape key. By the way, if you've made some changes and you wanna save those changes, then you type colon W, which is short for right. All right, let's go a little deeper into the other things you can do in Vim's normal mode. I think this is where you'll really start to see Vim's power. You can edit or make changes to text in a lot of different ways. The general rule of thumb is you first type an operator indicating what you want to do and then you type a motion indicating what you want to do this to. The D key is an operator that indicates that you want to delete something. If you remember from earlier, the dollar sign moves the cursor from its current position to the end of the line. So if you type out D dollar sign, then you'll delete everything from the cursor's current position to the end of the line. This works with a bunch of different combinations. So you could do something like D E to delete to the end of the word, or D uppercase G to delete to the end of the file. If you press an operator twice, then the action will affect a whole line. So if you press D D, then that'll delete the whole line. All right, let's go one step further. The C key, which is short for change, is used to delete things, but it also takes you into insert mode afterwards. Let's say I have some code between a pair of curly braces and I want to change it which is something really common to do. In Vim, it'd be really easy. All you'd have to do is get your cursor between the curly braces. To do this, I can type out 5K in this case, and it'll get my cursor between the curly braces, moving it five lines up. Then I can type C, which is short for change, I, which is short for inside or inner, and then curly brace, and it'll delete everything between the curly braces and take me into insert mode. Now I can type out my new code, press the escape key to go back to normal mode, and then colon W to save my changes. Pretty crazy, right? 
All right, I wanna mention some other cool things you can do. You can use the dot key to repeat an action. So let's do DD, I'll delete a whole line, and then dot, I'll delete a whole line again. If you wanna undo something, you can use the U key, which is short for undo. And if you wanna redo something, then you'll do control R. If you wanna search for something in the file, then you can use forward slash, and then the term you're looking for. So let's say you wanna find console.logs within the file, you can do slash console.log, press enter, and then you use the N key to go through the results and shift N to go backwards. Vim actually has a third mode called visual mode. I honestly don't use this mode very often, but other people do. You press the V key to go into visual mode and then you can move around inside Vim to take action on what you highlighted. So let's say I move around here a little bit and then I press the D key and that text is gone. All right, so I know that might be a lot of information to take in, but I wanted to go through Vim's basic ideology and show you exactly how it works so you would have a better understanding of its usefulness and its power. With simple combinations of different keys, you can perform complex actions that are really common when you're writing code. On top of that, because many of these commands are abbreviations of what they mean, so D is for delete, C is for change, Y is for yank, they are relatively easy to remember and they eventually become second nature to you. For a proper follow along tutorial and great introduction to Vim, I would recommend you type out Vim Tutor on your terminal window and go through that tutorial. This should work if you have a Mac or Linux machine and if you have a Windows machine, you might have to install Vim first. If this hasn't convinced you yet, there are a couple of other reasons that make Vim awesome in my opinion. For one, Vim is extremely customizable. With a file known as the VimRC, you can change key bindings, you can modify Vim's appearance, and you can use plugin managers to install plugins and extend Vim's functionality. For example, I use a plugin manager called Vim Plug to extend several plugins that make my Vim coding experience very similar to a modern code editor like VS Code. Some of these plugins include Nightfly, which is a custom theme I use, NerdTree, which is a plugin that I use to navigate through my files, an IntelliSense engine called coc.vim, which I use for smart code completions. It's really awesome. And FCF, which is a fuzzy finder. This I use to find files within my project and also find text across many different files. If you want to know more about exactly how I customize Vim and what I put in my VimRC file, let me know in the comments below and I'll make another video about it. Alright, some other reasons that I think make Vim great are that Vim is a really lightweight program so it doesn't use up your memory very much. It's also pretty much everywhere so any Mac or Linux machine will have Vim pre-installed. On Windows you might have to install it, but this basically means that 9 times out of 10, any machine you find yourself with, you'll probably be able to use Vim. And this especially comes in handy when you're working with a remote server and you have to edit a file and Vim is your only option. And finally, this is a really personal one, but I think Vim makes coding more fun. It really helps me get engaged and in the zone when I'm working on my projects. And honestly, it makes coding feel kind of like a fun game. I kind of think that's a reason that's not mentioned enough. All right guys, that's it for this video. I know it was a lot. Thanks for sticking around if you made it this far. Those are my reasons why I use Vim to write code and why I think you might wanna learn how to use it too, even if it's just for fun or you know how to use it if it's your only option. Or if you get stuck in it, you know what to do. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions or feedback for me. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more content like this from me. See you guys in the next one. Peace.